What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Empire Gaming Channel. My name is AJ Gels. How y'all doing? As the title of this episode says, it is time for the final weekly show of 2019. Yes, I know we do technically have one more Sunday uh, in 2019, but uh, just with the slow, with the with the rate of news and just the fact that my uh, my industry, I work if for anyone who hasn't heard me say it one of the billion times I've said it. I work in a casino. Uh, the casino business actually ramps up around Christmas and New Year's. I know it's really odd, but it does. So, it, just because I'm going to be busy, uh, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to skip next week and we're going to call this one as the last of 2019. Uh, we're we're kind of starting on the screen because I, I, I kind of wanted to just kind of talk about, you know, next year and kind of reflect on this year a little bit. Uh, before we hop into the news, I do promise there's going to be news. So uh, if you want to go down to the description, there's going to be a timestamp of when the first news article is. Uh, so you can jump right to it if you want. So, like I said, I, want, I wanted to kind of reflect on this year, reflect on this year, kind of talk about next year. And I guess I'll uh, we'll look to the future first. So uh, basically what the plan for the channel is uh, moving forward. It's really, it's the same um, is, is everything, you know, I'm, I might be looking to add, uh, one new thing into, um, I guess my, my repertoire, you know, uh, the let's plays are going to continue. The weekly shows are going to continue. Uh, I might try streaming a little bit more, uh, now that I figured out how to do it. And it's actually pretty easy, uh, streaming straight through my PlayStation four. Um, but you know, that's, so I, I might, uh, might pop in and just do that randomly, uh, when I get, when I have some free time, um, but yeah, as as far as you know, like the con the channel content and everything, it really it's probably going to be the same. I am, like I said, looking to add one new thing, and that is an actual scripted edited review. Like I'm not talking like Angry Joe style or anything like super fancy. It's mostly just clips uh, from the Let's Plays, you know, um, you know that I've I've taken out as I've recorded, and just doing a scripted review on top of things. It, it's it's not something that I've really done before. Um, I've kind of written a few mock-ups um, for some stuff this year. I just haven't uh, had the time to sit and actually edit the videos. Um, so this is something I've been wanting to do for a little while. Um, and, you know, just kind of give it a try, see how it does, see how you guys like it, see, you know, how easy, difficult, whatever um, it is to do before uh, I really start uh, going, you know, full bore into it. But that's uh, just kind of a little idea of something new that I'm planning on doing. Uh, for the channel come 2020. Um, so, like I said, I mean, not a whole hell of a lot to talk about with next year, but I guess uh, kind of looking back, kind of looking back on on 2019. This is kind of a kind of been a weird year for me, uh, seeing that I had almost a complete 180, you know, about face sort of transition in my life. Um, if anybody was watching near the start of the year, I was still going to college. Um, you know, I was. I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to think. Cause I, I, I'm trying to think how I want to, how much detail I want to go into this. Um, near the end of 2018, I was having some problems with my anxiety and whatnot. Um, you know, I actually ended up in the hospital because of it. Uh, at one point in time, uh, I ended up having an issue where I had to actually leave one of my semesters, or my uh, my uh, fall 2018 semester early. I come back. Turns out that my advisor had completely screwed me over. Um, I was left without the ability to take classes. I'd lost my campus job, uh, working in radio and a lot of other, um, stuff. You know, it was one of those that school sides with me that, you know, yeah, my advisor way, uh, acted extremely inappropriately. And, um, and, you know, there was also some, some things that some words exchanged, um, that just kind of left me with a really bad taste in my mouth to the point where I couldn't continue, going to school anymore. And I came home, you know, I, I've, I've, I've got great parents, you know, I'm, I'm living at home currently, you know, they basically said, you know, I can, I can live, I can live at home, you know, they just want me to work. And, uh, that's where I actually ended up in my current job. Actually, I work with my dad, um, at the casino. It's, uh, honestly a lot of fun. I really do dig the job, but, uh, I, I just, the whole point of this, it's it, this isn't looking for sympathy. This isn't looking for anything like that. This is me trying to say, look, I had a really m big thing happen and had to really try and figure out what I'm doing with my life in the span of a couple weeks. 
uh, earlier this year, and um, through all the time this year, there were, there were dead spots in uploading. There was times that I that I couldn't upload fast enough, you know, um, especially when I was starting the new job and everything. I want to say thank you so much, guys, for sticking with me. Um, I, I know this channel isn't some massive, you know, <laughs> some massive channel. It's, I think, 360-some subs. And um, I, I don't... I, saying that this is a hobby makes it sound like I don't put any effort into this, and that's not how I want to make it sound. But this this is really my escape from work and my escape from kind of my, my daily life or routine or whatever. This is just something I, I love doing. I have a lot of fun talking about video games and playing with video games and talking with you guys about video games. It's it's really kind of helped me keep my sanity. It's, it's stressful in a way, um, but it has really kind of helped me... Um, kind of get past a lot of shit this year, uh, a lot of shit uh, in previous years. So like I said, I just want to say thanks, guys, for sticking with me. Um, like I said, I still plan on going into next year basically until I get shut down uh, by YouTube, which uh, I, I joke that it's going to happen, but I, I always have that fear, you know, with the with the TOS changes earlier this month or the COPPA shit next year. So... Um, Either way, I'm in, I'm on BitChute, by the way. Link in the description. I'm still having problems with BitChute, but I, I contacted the BitChute support. Hopefully, they can tell me what the hell is going on. Um, either way, that's that's not important here. I'm <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying to say, guys, and and I know I've already said it. Seriously, I I, I cannot express how much I love you guys. I want to say how, how thankful I am that you guys have kind of stuck with me through all my shit. Um, it, how you guys can even put up listening to my rambling stupid ass, uh, it, it really does mean something that there's, that there's uh, even this group of people that, that enjoy listening to me. Cause when I started this channel, I honestly thought, man, I'm going to be lucky to get pull 10 subs. And, um, like I said, it's here I am. I, I, I absolutely, I absolutely love doing this. And, um, uh, yeah, I want to say, I, like I said, want to say thanks guys. Thanks for putting up with me. Um, let you know that it, that it seriously it means something to me. I, I just, yeah, wanted you guys to know that. So, all right, that's enough of the sappy bullshit. Um, I think that's all I really wanted to say. I thought I'd ramble a little bit more than that, but uh, I guess we're I guess we're we're good. So yeah, like I said, that's a look at uh, the channel for uh, next year. A little bit of a uh, thank you guys for uh, putting up with me <laughs> all the way through 2019, and uh, here's hoping 2020 doesn't suck. So uh, let's get on to what we actually came here for. Let's get into the news. All right, up first, a bit of old news, I guess, by announcing that this came out uh, on the 9th article, Timur Hussein of GameSpot. New Bioshock game is now in development. 2K has announced that a new Bioshock game is in development at Cloud Chamber, a newly founded uh, development studio based in San Francisco and Montreal. The game itself has not yet been titled, nor do we have a release date platforms or anything else. At this point, we simply know it's in the works. So, all right, I, let's, let's think of this logically. Obviously, it, it's going to, it's going to be a multi-platform. So, you know, probably if we don't have a release date yet, it's going to be PS5, uh, Xbox Extreme, whatever the hell the new Xbox is called, I honestly, System X Project, I can't even remember what the hell they subtitled that goddamn weird boombox looking motherfucker, um, we, we know it's gonna be a multi-platform game, and honestly, I'm a little surprised it took them this long to announce a new Bioshock game, I, Infinite definitely split some audiences, I know that, because I know a lot of people who actually really didn't like Infinite, I loved it, but it was because it was more of a my kind of game than what the original Bioshock was. And really, it was a different game altogether. It really wasn't a horror game. It was more of a first-person sort of drama. I mean, there were horror elements. But for the most part, it wasn't a horror game like the first two Bioshock games were. It was very different. The way they tied in the multiverse stuff I thought was really cool. Um, you know, I'll, I'll get more into that a little later. Let's see if they, they go into a little bit more about the concept. But like I said, uh, let's be honest. This is going to be a, um, multi-platform, uh, game, you know, uh, PlayStation 4, what uh, the, whatever the Xbox is called. I maybe switch, I don't know, PC, all that good stuff. Um, uh, my guess on a release date, 2022, but that's a total shot in the dark. 
Uh, Glad Chambers described as a, quote, collective of storytellers eager to push the front lines of interactive entertainment, but making unique, entertaining, and thoughtful experiences that engage the world, end quote. According to 2K and Cloud Chamber, the Bioshock title will be in, quote, development for the next several years, end quote. So don't ex um, expect to, don't, try this one more time. So don't expect it to release any time soon, or even necessarily for the current con generation of consoles. Yeah, no shit. As we continue uh, growing our uh, product portfolio, we remain inspired by opportunities to invest further in our valuable IPs, great people, and their collective long-term potential, said David Ismailer, president of 2K. Quote, Bioshock is one of the most beloved, critically uh, praised, and highest rated franchises of the last console generation. We can't wait to see where its powerful narrative and iconic first-person shooter gameplay head in the future with our new studio team at Cloud Chamber leading the charge, end quote. Both Cloud Chamber Studios will be headed up by Kelly Gilmore, who has a significant experience in various aspects of the game development and publishing at 2K in particular. Gilmore has worked on Civilization and XCOM franchises. And I quote, we found a cloud chamber to create yet to be discovered worlds and their stories within that push the boundaries of what is possible in the video game medium, said Gilmore. Our team uh, believes in the beauty and strength of diversity ugh, in both makeup of the studio and the nature of its thinking. We are deeply experienced. That's not. I'll get into that in a second. We are a deeply experienced group of game makers, including many responsible for Bioshock's principal creation, advancement, and longstanding notoriety. And we are honored to be part of the 2K family as stewards of this iconic franchise. End quote. See, I really, really hate this quote. I really hate it. And if you want to know why, it's the it's the beauty and strength of diversity in both makeup of the studio and the nature of its thinking. Look, I I've always said this. Look, I do not give two shits about diversity. I really don't. All I want is a good game. You know, I, I guess the diversity that I care of is diversity of thought, which I guess is what they're kind of getting at there. But the way they make it sound, it's that modern day, all every color of the rainbow, all that stupid crap i know i try not to talk about this stuff on the channel because i don't want it to be some political or social movement crap but i hate it when i see this stuff so just seep into this industry and i guess you know you can tell me aj this has been a part of this industry for a long time but it's it, to me when you have to say look we have somebody of every race working at this studio and maybe i'm mis misinterpreting this because of the modern because of modern day the modern day political structure of the world. Um, but every time I hear somebody say that, look, we got, we, we have ever somebody of every race working for our studio. My answer is you didn't tell me anything. You just said, look, we're so progressive. It doesn't tell me that your game is going to be good or your company is going to even be good. It, it frustrates me. I, whatever. Sorry. Rant over. Uh, While well, Gilmore will serve as global studio head of Cloud Chamber and be based in San Francisco, the Canadian arm will be overseen by Ken Shesh. Shesh? Shesh? I'm not even going to. Yeah, I'm done. Uh, previously general manager for Zynga in Toronto and founder of uh, indie developer and publisher Trapdoor. The last entry in the Bioshock franchise was 2013's Bioshock Infinite. However, the Bioshock collection was released for PC, Xbox One, and PS4 in 2016 and delivered remasters versions of the first Bioshock, Bioshock 2, and Bioshock Infinite. A variety of 2K studios have contributed to the development of the franchise with Irrational Games, originally founded in 2K Boston, um, being the principal developer on the first game and Infinite, 2K uh, Marin, 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 I don't know, uh, took point on development of Bioshock 2, while 2K Australia support developed uh, development on some of the games. It was rumored uh, that following laughs, 2K Marin, Marin, uh, I'm going to stop attempting that, uh, had effectively closed. However, CEO uh, Strauss Zelnick uh, indicated that uh, this was not the case, and in fact, the Marin team would continue working on Bioshock GameSpot, has sought comment from 2K on whether the new Cloud Chamber team is what was formerly the 2K Marin team. Uh, following Bioshock Infinite and Rational Games also downsized significantly and was expectedly rebranded as Ghost Story Games. The smaller team is headed by Ken Levine, creator of the Bioshock franchise, and is focused on developing narrative-driven game experiences. Little is known about what Ghost Story Games is making, but in October, a job posting was uh, described it as a, quote, 
creatively ambitious project in the immersive sim genre, end quote, which is something that Levine and no doubt other teams, uh, no doubt others on the team have experience with, having worked on System Shock 2, SWAT 4, and the Bioshock series. Although Cloud Chamber and 2K have not specifically uh, have not specified a release window or platforms, it's a safe bet that the new Bioshock title will be for the next generation hardware, such as PS5, Xbox Scarlet, and PC, given that the project will be in development for several years. Uh, we we also know I can I can say this up front through another GameSpot article. Uh, Ken Levine has nothing to do with this new project. He has no Ken Levine has nothing to do with the new Bioshock game. Um, honestly, I, I think the the last Ken Levine game was that. Um, oh man, what was it? Was it called Perception? I think that's what it was. It was that horror game where you played as the blind woman in the haunted house where you used uh, the, the cane to use echolocation, whatever, to find your way around. It was a really interesting idea for a game. I, I kind of wanted to try it. I just never got around to it. Um, but yeah, so, so we know that Ken Levine's not working on this new Bioshock game. And um, honestly, despite my rant on that diversity crap, um, my actual opinion of this, I'm excited. I, I'm really curious to see what Bioshock is, where they're going to take Bioshock next. Um, I mean, it... Part of me wants to say uh, it makes me nervous that 2K is an, uh, connected to this, just like whenever EA is connected to something. But all in all, I I, I am excited. I do like uh, Bioshock. Uh, I, I loved Infinite. I, I have respect for the first two. They were not my cup of tea. Maybe that's because uh, I made the mistake of watching the movie Stay Alive, which, by the way, if you haven't seen it, highly suggest it. It is a great movie. You actually, uh, my personally, my favorite line is where you get to see Frankie Muniz. Yes, he's in this movie. Look up into the sky and yell, "You bitch, that's cheating." It's great. Um, sorry, it's like I said, it, it's a, it's a, it's. I think I think it's like the only slasher flick that was um, Disney's only slasher flick. I think that's what it is. It's it, it is like old Disney. It's it's again, check it out. It's actually a, a fun hokey movie. Either way, I watched that movie before I, I uh, played the first Bioshock, so it kind of made me uncomfortable to actually play the game. But I have sat with people and played through Bi played through the Bioshock games, or one and two, and I, I really do like them. I, I really do think that they did something cool with that. I think Infinite opened it up a lot of really interesting possibilities with the whole multiverse, and that there's always a lighthouse and blah, 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 blah. All that stuff in Infinite where you find out that everything's connected through a series of multiverses and everything. So that actually makes me say this. They could go a totally different direction with this Bioshock game. We, we don't know what they are gonna what they could do. I mean, obviously it's probably still going to be a first-person shooter because that's the core of the franchise. But, I mean, is it going to be sci-fi? Is it going to be Old West? Is it going to be more under-the-sea stuff? Is it going to be a new floating city? It, it, it could literally be anything now that we know all the Bioshock games are technically connected through this multiverse. We could literally see anything with this. I think that's the coolest thing about it, is that there there's just almost limitless possibilities, and I, th I think it's going to stand on its own, whether it's going to have the Bioshock name, but have to kind of stand on its own in a, in a way. But, uh, yeah, I'm I'm definitely interested. Even without Ken Levine um, taking part, I'm, I'm still... Really excited to see a new Bioshock game, and it's uh, nice to know that's in development. So, let's move on. Moving on to an article on Push Square, Sony to develop critically acclaimed MLB The Show series for other consoles. Article Sammy Barker of Push Square. I, this was a bit of news that dropped that I thought was really interesting. Uh, and this is, you know, as you, as you can see, uh, the announcement, uh, Xbox tweeted this out. And apparently Nintendo is also uh, really stoked because the show is going to be on uh, on Switch as well. Let's uh, take a look at the article here. Uh, looks like Major League Baseball was not satisfied with the best sports game on the market being exclusive to one platform. As from the 2021 installment, uh, MLB The Show will no longer be exclusive to PlayStation consoles. Uh, the bizarre twist here is that Sony San Diego will continue to be the series developer, meaning that the first party franchise will now in all probability launch on the Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PC. The team in green has already responded to the news. Again, 
you can go uh, follow the link in the description if you want to go follow all the tweet, read all the tweets and everything. Uh, while on the surface is quite shocking news, we're going to assume that Sony was pressed into making this move. We assume, if faced with the possibility of losing the license entirely, it preferred this outcome. It is unprecedented, though, starting this week, PlayStation 4 owners will be able to sign into Xbox Live to enjoy cross-platform mi uh, Minecraft, while one of the Japanese giant uh, biggest... Well, the Japanese giant's biggest exclusive is now going multi-format. War has indeed changed. <clears throat> um, no, I, I, I think everybody's saying this. I, I think that, that, is, that the fact that MLB pushed Sony to release this on multiple platforms, I, I think that that was, that was clearly the... Um, that, that, that was obviously what happened here because... It's it's like they said. This is one of the most. This is probably one of the most popular, and I would argue, most well produced uh, sports games. And look, like baseball and not like baseball. I think it's way better than two K. Uh, the the two K. The I'm talking uh, NBA two Ks. I think it's better than the N NHL games. I think it's better than most of what EA is putting out with Madden and FIFA. And I enjoy Madden and FIFA. Um, I think this is it's true. I mean, it's like I said. It's not only critically the the one of the best sports games i i think it is i think it is the best sports franchise there is um and you know what i, I personally i don't i'm not getting mad that you know oh well, people on xbox now are going to be playing uh being able to play the show and people are going to be able to play uh the the show on switch or whatever um it doesn't bother me and uh, i just kind of it just like the i'm trying i'm trying to think how i want to put this um i Losing this exclusive, I mean, even though Sony is still obviously making the game and making money off of it, I don't think that this, that the show is, and I, and I could be wrong on this, I don't think the show is one of those those flagship franchises. I think it's one of those really cool things that Sony had that, but, it, but one of those really cool things that Sony had, but it's not a push to buy a PS4 or a PlayStation, if that makes sense. It's not an Uncharted. It's not an infamous PS, make a new infamous game. Uh, it's not a uh, God of War. It's not a Spider-Man. It's not a Horizon Zero Dawn. It's not a Last of Us Part Two. Hey, Xbox, take a note. All these great, uh, great exclusives I'm dropping here. Um, I'm sorry. I, I keep reading articles of everyone like, oh, the X everybody's saying the Xbox didn't do terrible. The Xbox is fine. The Xbox is fine. Blah, blah, blah. And I said, go, yeah, it might be fine. But when you compare it to what the PlayStation 4 did, I, it got pantsed. Let's be honest. I mean, the Xbox isn't terrible. It's a fine console, um, but I think that just from almost every aspect, I think Sony just, like I said, pants them. Sorry. I got off into a tangent there. No, what, what I was saying, though, is I think there are so many great single-player, big AAA games that sell units for Sony. I don't think MLB The Show is one of them. So I don't think it's a loss in that sense of the word. Um, it does it lose one of those cool, Hey, here's also, you know, if you're buying this, if you're buying a PS4 for these great games, there's also this great sports game. That's only on PlayStation. I think it kind of loses a second tier and that makes it sound like I'm trying to bash on the show and I'm not trying to bash on the show. I love the show, but again, it's like I said, it's like I said, I don't consider it one of those flagship things that Sony's going, we have this. I think it's Sony saying, look, we also have this. It's great. It's one of the best sports games that you can play, and it's only on PlayStation. I think that's a, that's a great thing to hang their hat on, although I think Sony gets behind more of their uh, more single-player um, narrative-based games, but that's just my opinion. Um, but yeah, I, I, I totally agree with people. I think this is this was entirely moved by the MLB saying, look, this is, it, this is our IP, our teams, our everything, and, and they wanted a larger share of the market. So that's, I think that's the obvious answer here. Um, I don't, like I said, do I think Sony lost something here? No. Do I think they gained something here? Also, no. I think this this was just a move. This is a lateral move for Sony just to keep the rights to make the games and so they can continue to make money off of it. That's, again, my take. If anybody disagrees with me on that, that's, like I said, that's my take. Moving on. In a move that has shocked no one, job listings suggest a Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order sequel is already in development. Article, is it Steven or Stefan? Let me Steven. Tailby of Push Square. 
Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order has been out on PlayStation 4 for just over a month now, and it's done pretty well for itself. Not only is it one of the best Star Wars games around, it's been breaking sales records and garnering a lot of love from players and critics alike. It's still early days, but what are its uh, chances at a sequel? Pretty high if we're to believe some job listings at developer Respawn Entertainment. A trio of jobs over on EA's recruitment website describe uh, openings at the Californian studio, specifically senior character artist, level designer, and senior software engineer. All three specify Respawn Star Wars team, and the latter makes mention of third-person action-adventure games. That sounds uh, that sounds like Fallen Order to us. Judging by this, it's perhaps not too big of a stretch to suggest a sequel is in the works. We shouldn't take this as a confirmation, so don't put your faith in this just yet. But it seems pretty likely we haven't seen the last of Cal and BD1. What do you think? Do you blah 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 sequel to Fallen Order? Definitely. Let's be honest. It, it, it's gonna see a. It, it's gonna it, Fallen Order is gonna see a sequel. Uh, even though it wasn't at the Game Awards, and, and my guess is it fell just behind. It, it fell. It came out just after um, the cutoff for nominations and everything, just because the game. Um, I, I think um, Death Stranding them came out just before the cutoff. Um, now, as far as as far as uh, Jedi Fallen Order, I it took a little bit for me to kind of get into it, but I actually I do really like the game. I think it's a fun platformer. I love the Metroidvania aspects. Oddly enough, it's one of those... It's a Souls-like game that I actually enjoy. Um, and, my, and my reasoning for that is it's... I'm trying to think how to put this. My re, Why I like it as a Souls-like game is because it's a lot faster. I mean, that's actually why I like Sekiro Shadows Die Twice a little bit more. It is a lot faster than the Souls games, in my opinion. But Jedi's even faster. I, I, it's, it's bridges that sort of Souls-like and more action-oriented hack and slash. It kind of bridges that gap a lot better. Um, I think uh, Darksiders Three tried to pull that off. In my opinion, not very well. I didn't think Darksiders Three was that great. Um, sadly, for such a great hack and slash series to go into the toilet like that, and then the new one is going to be like a top-down twin-stick shooter. That really depresses me that the fourth horseman isn't getting his own, like his own game, especially because his character looks dope. Sorry, again, tangent. Um, like I said, should we even be surprised that Star Wars: Fallen Order is going to be getting a sequel? I, I'm, I, I think we can just leave it there. That obviously it's getting a sequel, and I hope we're all pumped. All right, guys. Apparently, we need to let Sony know if we want more Sly Cooper. Article Sammy Barker of Push Square. As I put out on Twitter, please let me know where to send the goddamn email, and I will send emails. I want another Sly game. I have been saying this for a long time. I have wanted another Sly game. Despite what this article is going to say, I say ignore and time happen and make an honest-to-goodness sequel to 3, one that doesn't suck. Uh, or here, here's here's another 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 idea. Reboot the franchise, start from the beginning with a new Sly game. Like I said, just kind of do give it the Ratchet and Clank treatment. Or a third idea, uh, remaster the um, one, two, three. I would I would love to see any combination of all of those because, like I said, I love Sly Cooper. Uh, it just it just absolutely great games, and um, I I, re I really hope that the franchise isn't dead. Kind of like Jack and Daxter and Ratchet and Clank. I hope that all three of those. See a, see more screen time like they deserve. Um, let's see here. Everyone bickers about PlayStation's most popular platforming double acts, Jack and Daxter and Ratchet and Clank, but this author's always felt that Sly Cooper is secretly Sony's best platforming property. I actually think I agree with it. As much as I love Ratchet and Clank, I came to that series a lot later. Um, Jack and Daxter, I liked, but I'm going to be honest... The first game, which was more a hardcore, serious platformer, I wasn't a mass... I, I, I enjoyed, but it wasn't until Jack 2 that I really kind of fell in love with Jack and Daxter, and I really liked 3. Uh, because I liked the kind of like the grittier, darker stuff, but I mean, maybe it was because I was an edgy teenager and everything. You know, I was so edgy. <laughs> but no, Sly Cooper has always been one of those that I, that I just I absolutely fell in love with. Oddly enough, though, I think I, I played them completely out of order. I played them 2, 3, 1, but... Um, yeah, I I am I'm really hoping that, but I totally agree with with Barker here that I I think um, Sly Cooper is the is the top. 
Uh, in fact, if you haven't played PlayStation 3 entry, Sly Cooper Thieves in Time, it's also, it's on Vita. It's what I know it as. It might have been ported over, but I, I know it as a Vita title. Then we strongly recommend digging out a copy. I don't. It, 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 well, let me put it this way. It's kind of like what Mass Effect Andromeda was to the Mass Effect franchise. For That's, that's what Thieves in Time is to the Sly Cooper franchise. On its own, if it wasn't a Sly Cooper game, just like if Mass Effect Andromeda wasn't a Mass Effect game, it would be perfectly fine. It's an okay game. I'll put it that way. It's okay. It's enjoyable. If you put it in the franchise and compare it to the the original trilogy, the OT, no. it's it's It becomes way worse. And that's my thing with Thieves in Time. I think it becomes worse... Um, when you compare it to the uh, the original Sly Cooper trilogy, sadly, because I, I, I wanted to like it, it's just it's n not the same quality, in my opinion. Uh, the developer of that installment, Sanzaru, San Sanzaru, uh, it's hard to say. Uh, games did an incredible job of retaining the spirit of Sucker Punch's stealth series. I will say that I still think though it just it wasn't as good in my opinion. Uh, while still in, uh, injecting plenty of its own personality, and it's admitted that it'd be open to a sequel. We love Sly, lead designer Matt Kramer told Kind of Funny Games, quote, we would love to come back to that world, And quote. He continued, we are always, uh, quote, we are always ready to dig into that, and it was a great franchise to work on. It was a great project, so all I can say is that if you guys want more Sly Cooper, let Sony know, end quote. Oh, we definitely will, Matt. Are you reading this, uh, Herman Hulst? Uh, how would you like to solidify your new role as Worldwide Studios Chief and green light this? Question mark. No, I'm serious. Uh, who do we send? Do we do we send emails? Do we do we do it? Because I'm 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 into I'm into sending sending emails. I I need more Sly Cooper in my life. Moving on to our final article, uh, we do have a video we're going to take a look at. We're going to take a look at the extended No More Heroes uh, three trailer. It's uh, it's still kind of the same thing. It just it's got a it's it's just it's like five minutes long. I thought I thought it would be a fun way to close this out. Uh, it was also suggested by it suggested to the channel by a good friend uh, Akita Touchdown. Go check out his he does streams and stuff um, on Twitch and YouTube and all that. So there you go. Uh, on, this is kind of a an interesting thing to kind of close out with because I, I remember that there was a lot of problems uh, between CD Projekt Red and Witcher author uh, Andre. I, I'm hoping I'm getting this name right, Andre Sapkowski. Um, apparently there, there was a lot of, uh, problems over who owned the, uh, who owned the Witcher and, or who owned what, uh, rights to everything. Uh, it was a big thing because apparently, uh, Sapkowski, when he sold the rights, uh, not, he just sold the rights, but when he, when he gave the rights to the video games and everything to CD Projekt Red, he did not believe that they would become the cultural phenomena that they are today or that it is today. So as I believe, uh, he'll say it later in this article. I think he said something of, you know, I don't want. He didn't want royalties. He wanted his money now. And you know, it's it kind of caused a split between the company and and Sapkowski. I mean, this is back when CD Projekt Red was nowhere near the juggernaut that it is today. Um, and I'm I'm really glad that they were able to come to a new deal and that they're still that they're able to be. You know, in a working relationship that they haven't an, uh, alienated everything. Um, I, I really like Sapkowski's work. Um, I, I actually, I really do. I, I would heavily suggest if you haven't read the Witcher books, I actually suggest them. They're kind of weird if you don't know how they're set up. Like the the original, uh, the first Witcher book, or at least what I think is suggested as the first Witcher book. Um, I can't remember the title of right now. On top of my head. Either way, it's it's basically done. Uh, the the opening, like the prologue, is the um, the setup in the Striga hunt that you uh, that you see uh, animated at the very beginning of uh, the original Witcher game. Uh, that was uh, that was that hunt that you see, and then uh, right after uh, Geralt ends up, uh, or Ger why did I say Geralt? Uh, Geralt ends up um, really injured. Uh, I think he gets slashed across the chest by the Striga, and he's at a temple of Melitale, I believe it was, and he's recuperating from his injury, and basically, it'll be kind of like a chapter of him in this uh, this uh, this temple healing up and whatever. Like he'll see something that will remind him of a past event, and then the next chapter will be that past event. It'll be that story. 
you know, um, there's one where they call him the Butcher of Blaviken uh, in the in the the current timeline, and then the next chapter is here's how he got the nickname of the Butcher of Blaviken. It's it's an interesting setup. It's more the Witcher books are should almost more be looked at as like a series of short stories, not necessarily one overarching narrative. Even though there is a timeline and a in a history to piece together, it's 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 a well done. How to put it? It, it? It's a series of interconnected short stories. There we go. And I and it, just the way he crafted everything was was absolutely fantastic. Um, and if anybody's wondering where the if anybody didn't know where you know where the um, the video games take place in compared to the the books and everything, actually the video games take place after uh, the final book, where Geralt was technically dead, and um, that's that's where the video games pick up so i'm not really sure where the tv show starts if anybody know if anybody's seen the tv show and wants to suggest it to me i've I, part of me doesn't want to spoil the witcher you know i just kind of want to live at live on as the video games but if somebody wants to tell me no seriously aj the the uh the tv show is really good let me know and i'll i'll take a look at it i just I, i've just been kind of really hesitant to see it and i don't necessarily trust uh the critics' um, reviews of it. I, I kind of wanted like a like a person I know to say, no, seriously, dude, it's good. So if anybody knows, please let me know. Uh, let's see. Let's actually get into the article written by uh, Wesley and Pool. This is uh, I can't remember this Game Informer Eurogamer. The Eurogamer. CD Projekt Red and The Witcher author and creator Andrzej Sapkowski have inked a new rights deal for the fa uh, the fantasy franchise. On the day of the release of The Witcher on Netflix, The Witcher video game developer CD Projekt announced the agreement, which grants it new rights and confirms the company's title to The, Witch uh, to the Witcher IP as it relates to video games, graphic novels, board games, and merchandise. Here's the blurb, and I quote, the agreement satisfies and fully clarifies the need and expectations of both parties, past and present, and sets out a framework for future cooperation between the two sides, end quote. While the details of the deal remain confidential, it certainly looks like Sepkowski, who has been dubbed the Polish Tolkien, has improved his situation. Back in 2017, Sepkowski told Eurogamer the global success of The Witcher following the release of the third game in the series hadn't made him any money because he sold the rights to CD Projekt for a lump sum without asking for royalties. See, this is one of those that I have to sit here and go, because actually I saw a lot of people going, oh, well, it's, it's terrible Sapkowski didn't get any money. And I and I sit here and go, well, but he sold the rights for the lump sum. It's not CD Projekt Red's fault that they made, like I said, a, a media juggernaut out of The Witcher. And I, and I mean, and again, I, I mean nothing against Sapkowski, but I, I honestly, I think CD Projekt Red's The Witcher is more famous than... Sapkowski's Witcher. I, I've actually talked to people who know the video games. Go, it was a book. Like, yeah, it was a book series. That's what it's based off of. Uh, uh, most people, I, I, I'm willing to bet you, more people know that know it as a video game more than it, uh, it is a book series. And I mean, no disrespect to Mr. Sapkowski. Uh, I wish him all the best and everything. I think he created such a great fantasy world. It, his books have so much detail, but it doesn't feel like you're being hit over the head with. Because I've read some some like classical literature, like I remember it was like Fahrenheit 451. I had to read that in high school, and I was reading this, and I'm like, dude, you spent like a page and a half talking about the detail of a lamp post. I'm bored as hell. Sapkowski creates such a well-defined world with all the the rules make sense, the relationships make sense. It, it, it's, it's almost Game of Thrones before Game of Thrones. Um, you know, it just, everything makes sense. Like I said, the rules of the world make perfect sense. I, I absolutely love the Witcher series. And he, like I said, he just, he crafted something that, that would just made so much sense. It was great. Um, so, so I, I, I'm sorry, I kind of got lost in where I was going with this. I'm, I'm saying here that I mean no disrespect went to him, but honestly, I sided with CD Projekt Red when this first came out in 2017. I, I, I did. I, I said I wish that they'd come to some sort of kind of consensus between them, but I, I do think CD Projekt hadn't, did not do anything wrong. They came to him, he sold them the rights, he made the mistake. And I think right here he kind of says it, uh, what I'm saying. Uh, and I quote, I was stupid enough to sell them the rights to the whole bunch. 
Sepkowski told Eurogamer. They offered me a percentage of their profits. I said, no, there will be no profits at all. Give me all my money right now, the whole amount. It was stupid. I was stupid enough to leave everything in their hands because I didn't believe in their success. Well, who could foresee their success? I couldn't, end quote. And I, I, I don't think that's necessarily... <laughs> um, uh, like I said, I mean, this is, it was, I, I know CD Projekt Red existed before The Witcher, but they were nowhere near what they are today. Um, and I don't think they would have been what they are today without The Witcher. And I mean, no offense with that. I, and again, I mean nothing against CD Projekt Red when I say that. But let's be honest, it took The Witcher to really gain that that love. And I mean, hell, let's be honest. the way, It wasn't even the first Witcher game that did it. I mean, the first Witcher game was kind of a cult hit. It was super. I don't want to say niche. I mean, it's looked at now as one of the greatest RP as as a genre defining RPG. But when it first came out, it was more of a niche sort of cult hit. It kind of with the second one, it gained a little bit more traction. It got onto consoles. It got a little bit more recognition, and then the third one just absolutely blew people away. So. It's like I said, I, I I totally see where he was where he's saying that it's kind of hard to foresee that success. But when it comes to investments and selling IP rights and everything, it kind of his fault not to not to set up a royalty contract. I'm not gonna lie, but um, and and again, I, all the respect in the world to Sipkowski, but um, I, long and short of it, I'm glad they were able to come to a consensus here that that everybody's happy. Uh, now The Witcher is a billion-dollar franchise, and both CD Projekt and Sapkowski appear to have sorted their relationship out. We've always admired Mr. Andre Sapkowski's words, a uh, great inspiration for the team here at CD Projekt Red, commented CD Projekt boss Adam is Kiznitsky. Uh, hopefully I'm correct there. Uh, I believe today marks a new stage in our continued relationship, end quote. So what of a new The Witcher video game, CD Projekt, uh, which is busy preparing Cyberpunk 2077 for launch in 2020, has yet to announce a new game in the series, but given The Witcher's huge popularity, surely it's a case of when, not if. I totally agree with that. I, I really don't think we're done seeing The Witcher games. I'm just really curious to see what they do next. I doubt it's going to be... I, I actually say get move beyond Geralt. I say go to a different Witcher school. Um, go even before the events of The Witcher. I, I think they could do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, with The Witcher, but um, I, I don't know. I'll 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 stay uh, up to date on everything with uh, with uh, with a new Witcher game. I'm totally in. So, all right. Well, we got one more thing left to do in 2019 for this show. Let's get to it. As I said before, guys, this is No More Heroes: The Return. This is the uh, uh, an extended trailer from what we saw at the Game Awards. So, let's hop in. So today was a bust too. Oh, he just shoves it into the backpack. Damon, I love you! <laughs> Best friends forever, Foo. You know, when we saw this in the Game Awards, I was kind of thinking, like, are we seeing, like, the next trailer for, like, a Studio Ghibli movie? Here 
you're going back to your home. Damon, I love you. In 20 years, I will return. 20 years? You really mean it, Phil? Promise? Damon, I will return. No matter what. Promise. Go, Fu! Anyone getting like weird ET vibes? Like, I almost expected him to reach out saying, I'll be right here. Sir, it is time for the board meeting. We need to go back in. Just give me a minute. I've got an appointment. But I am not aware of... Just watch. Damon, I love you! That's Ooh. really creepy. Looks like you've been living large, Damon. You used our powers to get yourself a pretty sweet piece of the pie. Are you really, Fu? Thanks to you, I was able to return to my land. And now here I am, a full-on prince. Congratulations. But I'm hella bored. I got oh god, he said hella. I wiped out the neighboring planet, but then I was court-martialed and exiled to the Black Hole Prison. These dudes are my buddies! We met in the hole. Nice to meet you, everyone. Hey, Damon. Let's team up and make this planet ours. Ours? What do you mean? I'm talking about taking it over, sir! Do it! What did you do? Apparently, superheroes are popular in this country. So we're gonna jump on that. Right, Mr. Big Shot? Foo. What are you? I'm a goddamn superhero. <laughs> Superhero rankings? Uh, what? 2020 release? <laughs> Good luck. See, yeah, I I don't know, man. Intergalactic superhero rankings. I my my biggest issue with this is that I feel it makes Travis into too much of a good guy, and I know that sounds odd, but let's be honest. Travis has never been a good guy. He is not a hero. I mean, hence again, again, the name is No More Heroes. And Travis ended up getting that beam katana and ended up accidentally entering himself into the... Uh, well, trying to remember what it was. It's been a while since I've played No More Heroes, the first one. Was it, was it the international uh, like assassin ranking board or something like that? I, couldn't re I can't remember the exact title. He accidentally ends up killing the number 10 assassin in the world and... Um, ends up entering this big like tournament of fighting these assassins entirely so he can sleep with his brother's wife because there's this hot French chick who's like kind of egging him on saying that you know she'll bang him at the end if he ends up becoming the number one assassin in the world the number one assassin ends up being Travis's half brother who's Irish they have that really cool scene where they run at each other from that road and yell at him <laughs> <laughs> have that old long conversation where they reference the fact that they were running further. They, they'd been running longer than that road actually would allow. Um, again, the first game was just such a weird hack and slash game. It, it made use of the Wii's 
uh, motion controls. I, I, I think it was the first time that really that we saw that the Wii could be something more than a children's platform. So, so I think there was a whole lot of sort of niche things connected with No More Heroes. Again, it's the fact that we're not really playing a good guy. We're playing an asshole. Um, the, the fact that, like I said, the game was, was so tongue-in-cheek. It made fun of so many pop culture references. Um, again, I, I loved the game. And honestly, I like 2. I th- I know that 2 has some... Is, is a little questionable with a lot of people. Um, and I can understand that. You know, the fact that it's ba- it's basically the same concept as the first one. You know, Travis ends up getting lured in by the French chick. Uh, he's going to enter the, the assassin rankings one more time after he's basically said no more. Uh, now there's 100 people that he has to work his way through, even though it's there's not 100 boss fights in that game. Uh, it takes out a lot of the fun, kind of fun mini games like mowing lawns and shit. Yes, that was a mini game in the first No More Heroes game. It, it takes out some of that, some of the fun stuff from No More Heroes and replaces it with some kind of boringer stuff. Uh, but still, I think No More Heroes 2 wasn't bad. It was perfectly fine. I think it just kind of fell into that problem of it was trying to be. It didn't try to build on what the first game was. It tried to be the first game again. If that makes sense. It didn't try to build and be better. It tried to be the same. And I think that was the issue. Now with No More Heroes 3. Now my question. you know, I, I and, and obviously we didn't get a lot of Travis in this, this trailer. So my question is. Is Travis going to actually be the hero of our story here? Is he going to be fighting these guys for some some reason other than self gain? Because I, cause I, I, I don't know what to expect out of this. Um, and honestly... No more heroes. Travis Strikes Back really put a bad taste in my mouth because I, 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 I wanted to like that game so badly, and it just it didn't do it for me. Um, so I don't know. I mean, here's hoping that they actually they voice Travis this time that he's the Travis touchdown that we all know and love. Um, yeah, it's it's like I think this game has every possibility to be fantastic, and this game has every possibility to be utter trash. That is my stance on No More Heroes 3, and I'm really hoping for the former and not the latter. But uh, there we go, guys. That's my final take of 2019, at least in, as far as the weekly show goes. There will still be Let's Plays. Uh, so I want to say, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, one more time, I'll just I'll reiterate what I said. Thank you for sticking with me this year. This has been kind of a weird year, uh, trying to get my life kind of in order, <laughs> kind of a... Like I said, going from right from school to almost a few weeks later, going into my new job and working and everything, trying to literally in about a week and a half, completely changing what I wanted to do with my life. Uh, well, I guess having to change what I wanted to do with my life, dropping out of school and everything. It's just it was a a really crazy time for me, and you guys seriously helped me through it. And I want to say one more time, guys, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I love you all. I had so much fun this year, and here's hoping that next year is even better. So, uh, as always, like, comment, you're not already. Please subscribe to the channel. Help the channel grow. Uh, help me with the algorithms and all that shit with uh, commenting and interactions and whatnot. Uh, if you want to go follow me over on BitChute in the event that uh, there's any sort of shutdown in the channel because of the COPPA crap or anything like that, uh, links are down in the description along with all the other social media platforms. And other than that, thanks so much for watching, guys. And for the final time in 2019, my name's AJ Gell. This is Something Game Channel. I'm out.